Welcome back to Afternoon Garage. So last week, if you've been following, I took the battery out of my Fisker Karma. So the battery sits there on the floor on the stand that I built. And I'm ready to start disassembling it, taking it apart, and start testing the individual modules. So I think the first thing to do is identify the modules by a number. I'm going to use a number, the standard number that Fisker would use in the factory service manual. We'll number those and then each component we take off, we're going to have to label that to make sure and get everything right back to where it belongs. Another thing is, I'm going to have to really try to create some really good video. There's a lot of cables and harnesses and wire ties and pads, thermal pads that, that make this whole battery assembly what it is. There's also some electronics within the battery modules themselves. We'll get to that in a minute, but that has to be disconnected and all the cables kind of tied to a general area before we can start taking these modules off. Not only that, they're band clamped and they're also bolted. So what you really want to do when you have a lithium battery pack, one of these flat battery packs, you want to make sure they're squeezed down as much as possible because that eliminates uh, any of the puffiness you get with some of these batteries and it also helps with the cooling. And it also helps with current capacity. For some reason, when you take these uh, lit nanophosphate lithium batteries and you squeeze them together you can get a lot more energy out of them. Don't know how that works but that's fascinating to me. Anyway, let's get to taking this apart, take the modules out of it, get them tested. So here we have the right side of the battery pack here. So this battery pack consists of 15 modules with 21 cells in each module. They're in a series parallel combination. Each one of these puts out uh, 20 to 24, 25 volts a piece. So in itself, it really is not uh, too dangerous, but when the battery is hooked up in series, well, you can add 20, 22 volts times 15. That's quite a lot of voltage at the end. That's uh, near three, three, 400 volts at the end. So you definitely want to be able to uh, isolate this as quickly as possible to make sure that you don't have any, uh, any high voltage going on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart these intermediate bus bars first and then take apart the ones that go to the contactors here and kind of lay those over, get those out of the way. So then now everything will be isolated. Everything's going to be, uh, it's, the batteries are going to still kind of be hooked up to each other here. And we'll take each one of those off independently. Get yourself some lineman gloves or something like that. Typically they're made out of leather. They're a little bit expensive. But, uh, you know, if you slip and you do something stupid, well, cheap insurance there, huh? All these bolts here that bolt this battery assembly together, there's bolts on either side. Um, luckily, they're all Torx, so they're not Phillips. You know, you can really get something on there and have a positive connection. And also retrieve the bolt and not have the bolt fall down somewhere in between where you can fall in there and get <laughs> do something nasty. Definitely don't want to have that happen either. So when you're taking this apart, make sure you retrieve all your bolts and uh, just be safe about it. I think we're going to start off first also by labeling each module, putting a, a label on it to make sure that it goes back where it came from. These are different. They're not interchangeable. Um, I'm, I'm going to find out why that is. But I do know that only certain modules can be swapped. And then there's a module in this pack that's independent all of its own. The one on the end here is different than all the rest of them. Not quite sure why that is. From my understanding, there's 15 modules with 21 cells per module. I'm not really quite sure why there has to be the need to have something different, other than the fact that maybe the, these bolt locations might be a little bit different. You know, the orientation to where you get the uh, positive and the negative on what side of the battery. That's probably what you're dealing with there. So that you can chain these all together in series and have one big battery pack. Now we've numbered this exactly as the Fisker Protus laptop would actually have them identified as. So if you're using a Fisker diagnostic tool, it's gonna say, but that one's number one, that one's number two, that one's number three. Then it goes four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. What we're going to do here is when I take these off one by one, I'm going to make a spreadsheet with these on it. Start taking the bus bars apart and the BMS wiring. I'm gonna try to save these if you can. These things here, it's like a little Christmas tree thing and they push down in there. I don't really think there's any need to cut the zip tie here. Um, more or less just kind of pull these things out. Uh, these things are a little bit tricky in here. We can just take it on this side. I had to stick a screwdriver back in here. Pull that tab up. This plug comes right out. So now we also see that these are actually marked. That says M15, M15, M15. So all these numbers should jive and at least you know, we don't need to mark this because we know exactly where this is gonna go back in. Getting there, just gotta disassemble this whole thing and get down to the meat of it. Um, I did cheat a little bit and I went and measured some of these voltages and I can see now module six has a big discrepancy. It's about two or three volts lower than everything else, which kind of tells me that 
two or maybe three batteries have failed in that pack. So I'm kind of anxious to get it out, check that out. Well look, got the battery pack out, got it mostly disassembled so we can put it on the bench and start testing it. I think the thing to do is figure out what I'm going to do for test equipment, test cables, that kind of thing. I do know that these pack quite a lot of current. They're uh, 24 volts at uh, 60 amps. It's quite a bit of current so next week we're going to figure out exactly how we're going to connect these safely up and do some kind of charging. Another thing is is that there's Boy, there's a lot of cells here. You know, there's uh, 15 modules uh, with 21 cells in each module. So that's quite a few uh, cells to test. So we don't want this to take, you know, all year, but it's going to be really difficult to do that with the kind of current capacity that we're talking about. So we'll figure that out next week. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. There's much more to come. Till next time.